pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a few minutes. If we could do a moment of silence for Porter. Um, we lost Porter about a couple weeks ago due to cancer. So if we could just send our condolences to his family and friends, that'd be great. Thank you. to our consent agenda. Is there any piece of the consent agenda that you would like removed at this time before we vote on all of it? Mr. Hellcroft? Are you good with all three? Sure. Can I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes the approval of minutes of October 10th, 2023, and November 3, 2023, the approval of payroll and warrants, and the out-of-state field trip request, Amica Pavilion, Providence, Rhode Island. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mrs. Padera? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Halcock? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Moving now, there is no delegation, no one signed up for delegation, so we are gonna to move to new business. The superintendent's report, Dr. Bailey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, before I get started, would you mind if I took things out of order? I'd like to um, start tonight with, with the Ford Middle School curriculum highlights as we have many um, students with us tonight. Um, and if I could call Mrs. Sylvia up to the podium, the principal, she will be introducing the students, um, but they're going to be discussing Responsive Classroom and they are the other student ambassadors. And as you know, we've had that program running at the elementary school and it seems to be a big hit this year at the Ford Middle School where we have many of our um, leaders, student leaders who are ambassadors who would like to highlight tonight. Welcome. Thank you, Vice Chair, Mrs. Gomes, members of the school committee, Dr. Bailey, thank you for letting us switch it up. Have a quick little presentation. You all may be able to read this, the font is so tiny I can't right now. Um, but it does match our district strategic goals, creating thriving social and emotional learning experiences for all students, and achieving academic excellence for all students. We have 12 ambassadors in the fifth grade. That's one per advisory. If you can, the fifth grade is a larger grade, so they have more ambassadors. In sixth grade, we have eight, and I have three of them here. I have one fifth grade ambassador with me. Seventh grade, we have eight, and eighth grade, we have nine. Remember from September, all the teaching staff and powers are involved in this morning advisory. Everyone is involved in this advisory in the morning. When we first began, I gave them each this certificate, kindness, acceptance, inclusion. And those are the three words, and we talked about that in September, and we modeled that throughout the year, throughout the months. Myself, with their advisory teacher, we chose them to be ambassadors in September, and they will be ambassadors for the entire year. And then in January, yes, we all can fit. I asked, Alexandra, you probably need to come up front too. I asked each of them to, to choose someone in their advisory to come and bring on board with us. So we won't say goodbye to them, we'll just make our circle bigger in January on kindness, acceptance, and inclusion, and that there's no cushion it without you. This school doesn't exist without them. It doesn't. It's very quiet in the summer when you're not here. You know in the summer when you were doing the uh, bulletin yeah. boards? It was really quiet, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, our first meeting, I think this is with my eighth grade group. Is Jack in there? Jack? Jack's there. Yeah. 
Is that you? So I'm, Jack I'm, Silva, I'm, yes. I'm right back there. Yes, you are. In the blue, blue, in the blue sweatshirt, yes. This is my seventh grade group. Sophia, are you there? No. Yes. You're right in front there. Yes. My sixth grade group, I have Jack. Emily and Cheyenne, is this, everyone is there, or maybe this picture? Yeah, I'm in the okay. sweatshirt. Okay, excellent. And my fifth grade group, I think Alexandra is right next to me. Um, and so we meet, we try to, to swap it up so that we don't meet every Friday, because we were meeting on Fridays, they missed their special, if it was banned, I don't want that to happen. So we are meeting throughout the day, though, it's not an after school right now. So we have Alexandra with us, wave Alexandra. Mm -hmm. We have Jack. Can't see you. Oh, sorry. Hey. <laughs> Jack T. And Cheyenne, and Emily, and Sophia, and Jack in the eighth grade. So at this point, we can hear from you. So, were you honored to be chosen, and why? Do you like to be involved in school? Do you like beginning your day with advisory? You can go if you think you know the answer. Either one. Um, I like beginning the day with advisory. And um, why do you think? Why is advisory good in the morning? It's good in the morning because the slideshows are fun, and I really like my um, advisory teacher. Someone else want to share? Were you honored to be chosen? Do you like to be involved in school? Do you like beginning your day with advisory? Um, Go ahead. I was honored to be chosen because it shows that... Jack, excuse me. Can you just make sure you speak into the microphone? We have to go closer. Yeah. Just want okay. to get this. I was honored to be chosen because it shows that um, my teachers see that I'm trying my best in school and that it's working out, like my hard work. Yes, it is. Emily? Okay, thank you. Um, I like advisory to start the morning because um, during advisory, it, like it's just a wake-up call for your day, and also it gives you like a hint about like what's for lunch and everything that you're going to be doing for the next week, and it also you get to like talk with people and get to greet people in the morning. Thank you, Emily. Cheyenne, you want to share? Thank you. I like advisory in the morning because it helps me wake up by greeting my peers and everybody. Um, in my advisory group, and it's just a good way to get to know everybody. Thank you, Sophia. I believe that it was an honor to be chosen, especially because this is my first year here, so it just really shows that if you have a good effort, you can just be noticed, and all your work will pay off. Thank you, Sophia. Jack, you eighth grader. I was honored to be chosen because I am one of nine kids in the ambassadors and to be one of nine out of like 100 kids that's pretty incredible thank you it is incredible it is incredible i think my next slide is questions oh no we had a food drive in october with our with our costume event bulletin boards around the school we're working on improving those 7th and 8th grade they're starting a sock drive tomorrow 5th and 6th we'll start a pajama drive in november Questions. Can we have the first girl come back up next to oh, the microphone? Yes. Alexandra. She can answer another question if you'd like. Um, Are you like advisory again? Because we didn't really hear your oh. response. I um, like advisory in the morning because the slideshows are really fun and it's good to um, meet people in your class that you might not be able to talk. Do you have any questions for us? appreciate their adults tonight bringing them out for a meeting this is important this is the most important thing that we do we're here for the kids so I appreciate your time tonight so thank you all so much again and um, I will be scheduling a meeting 
to meet with the ambassadors very soon. We can do it in my conference room, okay? We can right. play a game of would you rather. We could do would you rather. Whatever they want. Mr. Um, McIntyre participated the other day with the kids. It was funny. All right, well, thanks for the heads up on that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And next, um, again, we're going to take something else out of order. Um, I'd like to call the representatives up from PJ Keating. At this time, I'd like them to introduce themselves. They have a rather large um, donation for our school, and they're going to speak about that. And then when they are done, I would love to be, have the opportunity to take a picture with the school committee and Patrick McIntyre and myself. So we'll call them up to the podium. If you could introduce yourself and talk about the project, um, that would be great. Thank you and welcome. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Sarah Fitzgerald with PJ Keating. I've been at PJ Keating for about 17 years now. Um, this is the first time we've done an event like this, so I'm really excited to be able to do this for the town. I'm Rick Pavel. I've been with Keating. I'm the area manager. I've been with Keating for about 20 years now, and also my first time. Hopefully not last. <clears throat> my name is Bill Donovan. I'm a vice president of uh, commercial sales at PJ Keating. Uh, I'm the new guy. I've only been here three years. I've worked in the industry my entire life. Uh, this was quite a success story for us at PJ Keating as part of our celebration of 100 years of existence of PJ Keating, right? Yes. Exactly. I think we should help with this story. Yeah. So I'll tell you how this all came about. <laughs> uh, we have a boss, Derek Hill, who's president of PJ Keating. In mid summer he came to me and Rick and Sarah and said hey let's hold the golf tournament and uh, I'll give you just a little bit of money <clears throat> so we started out we're like all right we, we don't have enough money to want to hold the golf tournament so what are we gonna do we we gathered the team together we came up with some great ideas then Derek says hey let's pick a, a nonprofit to donate the money we're gonna raise right and we didn't even know if we had enough money to pay for the golf tournament <laughs> <No> <laughs> So we chose the Kushnet school system, right? Kids are the best, right? And they're our future. And, and, and um, you know, at, throughout PJ Keating, we really try to work with the communities. And a lot of what we do is support school systems. So um, we, we got some great sponsors, some great uh, vendors that donated money. We had a great group of people come in and, and, and golf. And, and we didn't charge anybody to play golf. All our customers play, paid, played for free. So it was a great event. We raised some money. All our customers had a great time. We had people from New Hampshire. We had people from Mass, from Rhode Island, from Connecticut. Uh, we had sister companies come in under that, uh, under the CRH umbrella, and it was really a, uh, a really a fun day. As Sarah, I think you can attest to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we raised some money. Yeah. So. And, and you know what? Having the kids here and doing their little presentation, we know we picked the right cause. I mean, that was moving. That was really awesome, I, I, unbelievable. And you know what? I mean, I, we, when we were picking a place, we were, we were like, where, where do we invest in? Where, you know, what, what's going to be most effective? Obviously, our kids and what they did today, take, that takes a lot of guts to come up here. That little girl, Alex, she had me like, like hello, right? It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. They did a great job. And so I don't think we actually said how much money we were able to raise and donate, which ended up being $26,565. Would you like to talk about briefly um, what oh. that money's going to go yes. towards? Yes, sorry, thank you. We'll just take a picture. Yeah, so um, we actually got with um, Patrick and Paul on maybe some suggestions. We had put together a few ideas and then got their input. And one of the items that came up was uh, new bleachers for the elementary school, right? I think new bleachers were just put into the middle school and um, they were looking for the bleachers for the elementary school. So we thought that would be a great cause that the money could go towards. Um, along with that, uh, the anything for like sporting equipment, gym equipment, things like that, or uh, field trips. I think we're also um, acceptable kind of uses of the funds or additional funds, whether it was left over after the bleachers or however it all plays out. In the big chat. In the big chat. Oh, I was very excited. I've never used one of the big chat. Right? <laughs> 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 Can we get this? If we can oh, yeah. yeah. hear the three of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just shake your hands. Thank, Thank you very much. And thanks for attending again. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll just all gather around. 
Okay. Who should pull the other side of the check? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Does that work? Yep, yep. Come on, and we'll squeeze it. Yeah. 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 Like we want you. You want to come in here? Do it. Right. One, three. Say cheese. Come on. Two. Three. Doing a bunch of them. We'll Photoshop this later. Don't you worry. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, you guys look great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 so it's solid blend. Can I, can, would you mind one more time? Yeah. Absolutely. Let me get our around. Yeah, Venmo on there. We'll take care of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Do you want to take a jacket? Oh, sure. Thank you. I like the jacket. Like, 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 he's leaving. He's like, leaving. Like, 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 I don't want to stay. Right. Much oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. Right. Okay. Two, three. Taking a bunch. All right, you're golden. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Attending this meeting for the first time, this is very exciting. This doesn't always happen. It never happens. It's never happens. <laughs> very this exciting. is a great meeting so far, this right? Is great. Yeah. So good. All right. Um, all right. Let me continue then with my report. Oh, yeah. We do have to vote. We do need a vote to accept oh. the check. Okay. So we need a motion. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the donation of $26,565 from PJ Keaton. So moved. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, um, school committee protocols. That is in your packet tonight. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know if anybody had any suggested changes if not we can vote to adopt what we previously had so does anybody have any questions regarding them it was just our behavior what to expect right. any questions on that? I, I may have one uh, recommendation for sure. a friendly amendment Ooh. Um, for those of you that were at the town meeting last night Okay. Um, I, I, and I could have missed it, but I, I went through this. Could we just maybe have something in here that says that we will, <clears throat> paraphrasing, but um, attempt to, I think we should see things first before we vote on them when possible. So meaning if something requires a vote, hopefully we've seen it, we've talked about it, we've discussed it, and the first time we're seeing it is not when we're also being asked to vote on it. I Especially on major big ticket items. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can we say that would be up to the chair to decide, or do you want it to come to the entire committee to decide? Like, for example, um, things like voting for this check, right? That's that, small, that, right? That's small. So that's would it be left up to the chair to decide what would be something that you would need a day? I, I, that, I, listen, that's fine. I just think it should be one of our governing operating principles that we try to do that. Um, again, it might not always be possible, but if I think about things like, we've talked about this before, superintendent goals, I think it'd be good to have a discussion, then we come back at a subsequent meeting and we approve them. If it's a big item like that, I think we should not see it for the first time and have to vote on it when possible. So if one solution that could be to that is that um, have the chair, you know, make the ruling, and then but the ability of the uh, membership to challenge the chair, and then 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 goes to a vote of the full committee. Which is something. And at any time, the committee can decide if we say votes may be taken. Doesn't mean that it's written in stone. But he wants it part of right. our protocol, which, uh, uh, yeah. Does anybody, um, do we have to make a motion to add this? We can add it. Well, I think what we should do is um, we can draft it and I'll just send it out to make sure this is exactly sure. what we the bring it to the next wanted. meeting. Yeah. And, and um, just to be clear, there are times things come up, we have to act urgently, we can deal with that. I'm just saying when we have the opportunity to be planful, mindful, let's have a discussion. 
so we don't feel rushed, so it doesn't feel like committees being put on the spot to make a decision. As a so we always, practice. just to remind people, we always send the packet out by Friday, as, as much of it as we can, as you know, um, so that you have time to review the packet prior to the meeting on a Tuesday. Um, but there are some things, I understand what Mr. Hood is saying, that, you know, as much notice as possible for certain other items, bigger items. So we'll draft that, we'll put that together for you, and then we'll put it again on the next agenda. Because this is something that the committee will have as guiding principles, you know, for the future. So it's not a rush. And just so I'm clear, I'm not asking for this because I'm um, implying that this happens frequently. Right, right. I'm just adding it as a best practice yeah. way for us to operate. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's it's a great idea. idea. Best years practice. ago, a few years ago, it was past practice to do exactly what you yeah. suggested. No, it's putting. So it's Thank nothing. You. So I appreciate the support <coughs> from the committee. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. So moving on, uh, I'd like to call Mr. Missler up to the podium to give us a technology update. Give this up. Good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Great to see you all. A uh, quick update from me. <clears throat> we went to, uh, we had 11 of us that went to MassQ. It's a technology conference, one of the bigger ones that happened in New England. Um, it was great. We had admin there, teachers, support staff, educational coaches. Um, we went through a bunch of professional development workshops. It was phenomenal. Uh, we even won, uh, the district won a cybersecurity workshop for phishing, which essentially means that the company's going to come out and they do kind of really kind of neat show and tell of to guess this phishing attempt, they show up emails and you have to try and guess it, which is good for us in the district, just kind of make awareness of the bad people out there that try and gain your personal information. So it was kind of neat for us out of everybody in that place, we won. Um, for a date update, uh, our EPIMS, which is our employee, employee data that we submit to the state, is ready to roll up early. Um, we had a meeting actually today with all the key partners that handle the data. And we kind of put in process and procedures in place um, I haven't heard of it happening in this district before, but the goal is to kind of get all the key players to have a better understanding of our data and how it works and, and what happens when we submit to the state. It was great today. Um, one of the things I mentioned in my last meeting was our efficiencies that we're putting in place, some of the things that we're doing to tackle that. Uh, for instance, we have ASPEN as our student information system. ASOP is our uh, attendance data system. Uh, right now we have a connection going from our Aspen system to our ASOP system, so that means less people putting in data. So that means someone doesn't have to type in the same name multiple times, they don't have to put in all this information. And with that, it means one point of issue. So if you make a mistake in Aspen, it simply just travels on, and you can fix it the same way. So long story short, much more efficient. And the goal of that is we're gonna try and do that with as many systems as possible. Um, uh, one other update, our fiber update, as we're doing our infra uh, infrastructure rollout, we ran through a little bit of a snag that was unnoticed, but uh, without getting too much into details, um, uh, I'll get a little bit detail for you guys so you have an understanding. There's two modes of fiber. You have a single mode and a multi-mode. Single mode can go a long distance. Multi-mode <coughs> goes very short. Both have different connectors, right? They look similar, but different connectors. When we connected to the AES building, uh, we went from single mode to multi-mode to single mode. So the problem with that is that connector doesn't travel all the way through. So no matter what we did, we couldn't actually transfer data from one closet to the far closet over by the first grade wing, which is a problem for us with new infrastructure. Uh, so thankfully we called the company in, they replaced the, the connectors, uh, we got them certified, it's up and running, everything's perfect. Um, we do have some more lines in the district that we'll take care of in a much later date, uh, but we're perfect now. Um, outside of that, it's business as usual. You guys have any questions for us? Anything we can help? Um, I think, Patrick, you had mentioned that we are uh, putting together a new website down the road yes. at some point this year, hoping. So that is good news, right, for everyone. Um, and that'll be for the district as well as each school, or? Yes, the goal with the new website, we haven't, uh, we haven't rolled out. All the key players in the district is working on that. And once it's finalized, we'll, we'll be showing it to the public. And it's going to have updated calendars. Everything's going to be nice on it. Um, you'll have all the new protocols, procedures, et cetera, everything that you want. And uh, everything in-house will have proper procedures for as well. So it's being worked on. It's being worked on. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? No, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Missler. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Up the superintendent's report, and we're going to move on to the business business manager's report. Mr. Patrick McIntyre. Good evening. 
Good evening, school committee. Um, we'll get right to it. The fiscal 24 budget, um, again, on track. No news is good news with the budget. There's a few lines overspent within you know the categories that are applicable that we don't need any sort of amendments to the budget. Um, but everything looks good. You know we're moving right along with that. Um, we recently had a budget subcommittee meeting to plan for the fiscal 25 budget. Um, and we're going to set up some meetings with finance committee and town administration to, to set expectations to jump right into that and get that built out um, and moving forward. Um, so if there's any specific questions on the budget, I'd, I can take those now. And yeah, you know, one observation. Sure. Um, when, I, when I looked at, you know, the expenditures and so forth, you have high school uh, tuition. Um, could it be broken down into how much we pay to each uh, to each high school, so we so we know because uh, I still you know we haven't of course maybe early in the year to know how many uh, students are going to each of them and, and how we're being you know how much we're expending for each one. Yep. So that's that's we can do that certainly. Um, Thank you. Your timing's perfect. We're just receiving our first wave of high school tuition bills. Um, they're coming in now. A lot of them are based on the October one Sims numbers that our tech department presented on um, last meeting. Um, so we receive those invoices and those student listings. We verify that they're residents in our town before paying their tuitions, but we can certainly break that out between our, our high schools. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, so jumping into facilities. Um, as everyone knows, with the ongoing efforts at AES to um, you know, deep clean that school and, and get it suitable to continue our, our teaching and learning over there, you know, um, our facility staff has been heads on um, overtime, extra time. You know, we, we've shared staff from this building to, to help work over there. And everyone's really just going the extra effort to make sure that everyone's safe and comfortable. Um, and, you know, we just released some communications about the school closure coming up um, the week of Thanksgiving. And we're doing everything together as a central administration um, to make sure this is a seamless process. Um, and it's obviously in the best interest of, of that elementary school and all the, those families, faculty and, and students involved. So, um, excuse me, I'm wondering if we can take a vote, an official vote in public session regarding the change in calendar. So what, what I would be looking for from the committee is an official vote in the change of the calendar that the AES staff will be out for two and a half days. I believe it's November 20, 21 and 22. Um, and those two and a half days will be tacked on to the end of the school year for AES staff. That is the change with the calendar, and I would I would just ask for an official vote on that. So it's November, what were the dates again? 20, 21, and 22. 22 was a half day, um, but so they would have to make up two and a half days. I'd like to entertain a motion to change the calendar year of 2023 to 2024 to have an abs a day off for Akushina Elementary School for staff and students on November 20th, 21st, and the partial day on the 22nd. So move. Oh. Oh. And also to be made up at the end of the school That's year. That's important. There Thank you. <laughs> All right, do I'll, I have a motion? I'll make, I'll move motion. that motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? No? Roll call vote, please. Did you want to say something? I just oh, want sorry. to say one thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's important for the public to know that remote days are not an option. Right. The state will not allow remote days. So I wanted to just put that out there because some people are curious about that. So it's just, it's not an option. The committee was too as well when, when discussing yeah. everything. Right. And, and Dr. Bailey, in the event that we had a significant amount of snow days, there are some options that you could potentially pursue to, to have a right. way Right, so just so people understand, there's five days built into the calendar at the end of the school year for snow days. Hopefully we don't have to utilize those. So right now we would be looking at AES staff making up the two and a half days. Should we make up, say we have the full five days, um, I could petition the state for a waiver for the AES staff if it gets t towards the end of June. Um, we're gonna have to wait and see how this works, but I would rather not even discuss taking days from February and April vacation. I just think it's easier to wait until the end of the year. People have plans 
And you know, quite honestly, they don't count these days unless we have a certain attendance rate. So, you know, I don't want to cut into people's vacations. And perhaps let's see how it goes. Hopefully, we have a mild winter, and it's not going to be an issue. So I, I think that's good. And you know, there's probably no my perspective. There's no perfect solution to this, but I think I certainly felt like two and a half days was maybe the least invasive mm -hmm. of the options and alternatives that we had. So I think this is a reasonable mm -hmm. uh, solution. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's move to a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mrs. Kodara? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we are well, so finishing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> And just while on the topic, you know, a lot of people in the district involved in this decision and, you know, the ongoing efforts have logged a lot of hours, um, a, a lot of effort, a lot of, you know, just communication, um, sort of on call, if you will. And really, it's, it's been in everyone's best efforts to, to solve this problem. So I just want to thank everyone publicly again for, um, you know, your help and, and faculty's patience and the family's patience as well. Um, and on the topic, you know, as we're, you know, moving through these things and looking at our buildings and having these engineering firms and environmental firms in our buildings, um, it's been a good chance for us to talk about um, maintaining proper routine maintenance on, you know, different pieces of equipment and just building spaces in general. So it, there's sort of been a, you know, um, a piece of that too where we're, 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 we're learning and documenting and making sure that we're going to stay on track of, you know, certain things moving forward to have, you know, the best environment for everybody. Um, moving on to food services, um, again, I, I just like to share data and try to show you a snapshot in time comparatively. Um, I've been comparing it to previous years and based on the October 2023 data versus the October 2022 data, um, meal participation has increased 70% for school lunches and for breakfast it has increased 6%. Um, so again, that, that to us is telling us that our students are participating in and um, you know our food services they're they're getting fed they're getting energy to, to learn throughout the day um, and staying focused um, within food services again we've updated you a couple times on our inventory process at this point we've inventoried everything onto a spreadsheet um, we have many of the replacement costs to sort of build out a plan on replacing some of this equipment that has been in there since the school's been put in place um, and we are tagging items with asset ID tags now so that we can you know have accountability of every piece of equipment um, in, in both cafeterias. Um, so we're 95% of the way there. Uh, a few more costs to kind of dial in and map out, and then we'll take that and kind of build that out into our plan um, to move forward with the spend down of the food service funds. Um, on a fun note, um, our food service director, Shelley, has a Thanksgiving dinner lunch, if you will, planned for November 16th for students and faculty. Um, and we're gonna take this opportunity to kind of dive into our first farm to school um, you know, activity where we're gonna be purchasing cranberries and butternut squash locally from local farms. And you know, that's gonna contrib contribute to the meal and be put a part of you know, cranberry sauce and um, butternut squash. So um, we're excited for that. And you know, it's gonna be a fun day. And uh, we, you know, we hope everyone participates in that I'm meal. Um, and then finally, to wrap it up, transportation. So again, um, I just want to thank families and students involved. There's been road closures around the town due to Eversource projects that are ongoing. Um, some that we haven't had all the information up front to anticipate, but um, you know, with last minute efforts to sort of reorganize stops and have parents come pick up students, uh, we've, we've been able to get students you know, home safely. Um, with with the family's help, and we appreciate their patience. Um, and then on the same note, you know, will we? This is the last year of our transportation contract, so um, in a matter of months, we'll be going out to bid to look forward to our um, transportation contract for the next three years. Any questions on facilities, food services, or transportation? Um, with the generous donation from PJ Keating. When do we think that stuff will be purchased? Um, so we just voted to accept the funds, but um, you know, in the past, we know we've quoted out the projects for the bleachers um, and, and you know other related needs. We know what our field trip needs are, um, and we know the PTO helps us out with some of those. So we'll evaluate that and revisit what our quotes were from you know last 
May, June. Um, we'll solicit, you know, three new quotes as according to procurement law, and we can get something on schedule hopefully as soon as, you know, one of our winter breaks or spring breaks to, to get going on that project. So pretty quickly, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How long will that project take? Do you know roughly? Um, so the middle school bleacher project <coughs> maybe a week from start to finish um, the problem is they have to bring in everything and unpack it and kind of lay it out on the floor and then we have to leave the gym as is for a set period of time so we don't want to try to do it during the school day um, and have them come in after hours to do it so we'd rather plan around a vacation where no one's disrupted um, but yeah we should probably be able to knock that out in a week or so Sometimes, yeah. yep before the end of the school year I, I have confidence in that if not right at the end Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Moving on to school committee member reports. Um, there is supposed to be a letter in our packet. I just can't find it. Do we know where it's under? It's for the exploration of potential regionalization yes. study in high school tuition. Bear with me. Where is it under? It's it's in under I did read it today. <laughs> You did read it? Yes. Oh, there we go. And Dr. Bailey suggested that I, I read this or that they've already read it? Right. On their no, own? I haven't. I didn't be able to cap in on that when I was going through all the others. Um, so do you want me to just give background on yeah. yes, how it's that's about? Yeah. Um, because Mrs. Downing is not here today, she's actually traveling. But um, the chairperson from the Fairhaven School Committee wrote a letter to Mrs. Downing, and this is Mrs. Downing's response um, as the chairperson from Fairhaven was questioning the fact that our school committee was doing some exploration of regionalization as well as looking at other school districts to include in our tuition agreements. So. This, the Fairhaven School Committee wrote a letter to Mrs. Downing. The letter in your packet is Mrs. Downing's response. And what we need tonight is if everyone on the committee is in favor of sending this back to Fairhaven as the response, that vote needs to take place tonight. Mr. Howcroft read that and we are going to go to the other communication that I have for parents. Um, this is a statement from the Akushina School Committee regarding our air quality which I think some people here are, are waiting to hear about. So I'm just going to read it verbatim. So during the past few months, the leadership of the Akushinet Public Schools has attempted to address issues of mold at the Akushinet Elementary School. A matter of such a a matter such as mold can be upsetting and rightfully cause concern among students, parents, faculty, and staff. Superintendent Dr. Bailey has worked tires, tire, tirelessly to, remove, to resolve this matter, taking numerous steps following consultations with experts. Ongoing testing continues to show that the air quality is well within normal ranges. As the elected board responsible for our district, we understand that no single decision or action is welcomed by all. We have seen during the past five years that Dr. Bailey always acts in the best interest of our students and stakeholders. She values community and staff input that is constructive and oriented towards solutions. Dr. Bailey's forward thinking, inclusive, and student-centered approach has made her an outstanding leader who has brought positive change to our district. We thank Dr. Bailey and the staff for their diligence and will continue to support their hard work in the coming months. So thank, thank you, Dr. You. Thank Bailey you, Dr. and your staff. In addition to that, we are planning a small town meeting for parents to attend to ask any questions that they have regarding the air quality at the elementary school. We haven't found a location yet or an exact date but it will be happening in the very near future and communications will be sent out to all parents for them to, to attend and to discuss any concerns that they may have. So that is that information regarding that. Thank you. Mr. Howcroft, are you okay with? Yeah, I have, uh, 
probably refer uh, this uh, to, to our council. Um, we have a, you know, signed agreements with both New Bedford and Fairhaven. Mm -hmm. uh, if are we put breaking the spirit of those two agreements by going to another, uh, you know, by looking, even exploring, mm -hmm. uh, with, with those, you know, are, are we really basically, the, uh, call it unfaith bargaining, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we have had counsel, we've, we've talked to counsel about this, and we were able to send this letter per, per their advisement. Mm -hmm. um, and in my personal experience with the schools, I feel that our students in a cushionet deserve the best that's out there. And if some schools are not holding up their bargain, then we have the absolute ability to look elsewhere for our students. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, you know, because I think, I thought it was just, you know, when we did it, I said, you know, you know, you know the Haven, uh, we seem to have a good partnership and they plan on, you know, and maybe we could just look at some of the issues. Yeah. So but. we've done that. We've we've actually researched that, and right now, I personally feel with the research that I've done that looking at other schools is in the best interest of our students. But Have, I, I just want to clarify yeah. what the school committee members are saying. Um, the ones who have looked into this is that they don't want to break the agreement with Fairhaven. They're looking at potential other options for students in the district in choosing a high school. In addition, in addition to, to, Fairhaven, to Fairhaven, Fairhaven to New Bedford. And New Bedford. So if a student wants to go to Fairhaven, they have the absolute right. However, if they're looking for certain criteria that Fairhaven or New Bedford doesn't have, they will have another opportunity. Um, just the question I have is, are you giving, say for example, Fairhaven decides, well, they're looking, they're breaking, uh, potentially breaking a, a agreement that we have. You know, well, they themselves and say that they want to no longer we're, take we're, a... We're not potentially breaking. Okay. It states clearly that if, if there are lack of resources, mm -hmm. then we have the opportunity to look elsewhere for those resources. Mm -hmm. Which is what we're doing. Which right. is what we're doing. Again, right. not taking away from New Bedford no. or Fairhaven, just adding another opportunity for our students. Okay. I just... Uh, uh, I remember the days when the Haven was not accepting our kids, mm -hmm. uh, our students, and also there was on a, um, a quota system. I, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there were other opportunities now. And, and, I, and uh, that would, uh, talk, you talk about turmoil among parents about, you know, going on to that. So I just wanted to avoid any type of uh, mm -hmm. we're, disruptions We're working in the closely future. with legal um, mm -hmm. and with the research that we've done, I think another opportunity is, I, is yes, needed. Yes, we discussed that I, last time. And I just want to point out, you know, the letter talks about exploring the feasibility of adding another high school. Nothing is written in stone at this time. Um, I think we want to be transparent with Fairhaven and New Bedford about what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So I think this response that Mrs. Downing, um, you know, would like your support on is just to send back a response to their chair to say, here, these are the things we're talking about, these are the things we're concerned about. Um, we would like to meet with you so that we can have full transparency. Yep, that's commendable. Yeah. I, yeah. Other I have no problems with that. Right. Correct. Yep, everything Nothing will change. We'll just yeah. add another school. Correct. Potentially. 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 Right. Potentially. Okay, I just want to make sure. Well, thank you. Okay. So I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the letter by Jennifer Downing, our chairperson, for the exploration and potential regionalization study and high school tuitions to other districts. So oh, with sorry. that vote, that letter will be sent, sent, sent to Fahim. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Uh, we can do all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously to send that letter out. On. So there are other communications and information in your packets. You can, I'm sure you viewed them already on Friday or this weekend. Any questions about those letters or documentation? No? Okay, so we are going to move to, we're going to have executive session to discuss the following 
as it would be detrimental to hold discussion in open session, as so the vice chair declares. So we will be discussing the pursuant of GLC 30A 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, specifically in the matter of Amaral Bus Company versus Accushionate Public Schools, docket number 2273CV00012, votes may be taken. Also, the discussion to, to, the, to discuss the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategies with respect here to safety and security of staff and students. Votes also may be taken. We will not be returning to open session. The next regular school committee meeting will be held at the John Tavares Library in the Ford Middle School on Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Do I have a motion to close this open meeting and go into executive session? So moved. Yeah, Do motion. I have a second? Second. second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mrs. Federa? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Hopcroft? Yes. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. coming.